Lots of floor demos. Um, I thought I would just focus today on the modern page of rules. And I think um, many folks uh, would like to see what they can do on top of the default modern page of rules flow that gets created on the site. Um, so I'm not going to go create the flow because I think um, if you create the flow, it just takes time. So basically, you start with your pages library, configure page approval flow under the flow menu, and then you get the create flow button where you can create the page approval flow. So that by default gives you a really simple approval flow, no different than any approval that you would see in uh, the flow uh, service, right? So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to kind of like now show you uh, what's with if you want to have multiple uh, workflows. And then how do you handle news posts and how do you, uh, you know, sort of approach auto-approve pages um, as uh, one example scenario. And then look at parallel approvals as well. Um, so let's jump in. Um, so this menu over here allows you to create different approval flows. Uh, so you are not entitled with just one, but you can have multiple approvals flow. Um, so this is really useful because... Um, once you basically want to have different workflows for different type of content, you don't have to complicate uh, by putting all of the logic into one flow. You can basically put, uh, you know, have multiple workflows and, and basically ask users to, hey, depending on the content, um, can you select the right workflow? So here is, for example, I have submit page for approval and submit news for approval, right? So um, now I created a page. I did not create a news post. So um, I could choose as an author. I know that I'm supposed to choose submit page for approval. But you'll get the options here. And this is really, um, I think I would recommend, rather than putting all of the logic in one big bucket that is in one big uh, flow. So that's the uh, associating multiple workflows, just getting started with using, you know, different workflows for different content scenarios. The next one is um, doing some conditions, right? So this is great. Um, this is not a page, though. So what happens if I actually use submit news for approval and, you know, go through the flow to uh, give some message and send it to, um, you know, approvers? Please review and... Let me know if you can approve. And I kind of submit this page, right? Um, so this is not a news post. Now I did submit it for the news post. So what should happen? Basically, it should, the flow should be, you know, um, smart enough to kind of say, hey, sorry, um, you know, this is not a news post. So you cannot use this flow right now. That's exactly the email I got. News approval only works with news post. You know, please create a news post and submit that for approval instead of submitting a page for approval. Really cool, right? So um, how do we do this? So if I go to my flow, submit news for approval, I modified the default flow to use something uh, where I first initially check if it's a news post. Now, um, if you have all of these actions, get file properties, get file metadata, um, and then when you build a condition, now you can actually see in the get file properties, you got a bunch of properties that Pages itself uses um, in the Pages library uh, for you to be using it in your flow as well. Now, one of the things I would suggest here is consider these uh, columns that you get out of the box as read-only columns. They can be manipulated today, and you can edit them and update them in the flow, but I would expect that would lead to different problems. So. Um, let's make sure that, you know, these properties, something that you consider them read-only because you didn't create them. The system created it for you. So one of those properties is promoter state. And that promoter state has basically zero or one. And one is a, uh, basically a news post and zero is uh, a, a page. So I'm checking if promoter state is one. That means that will tell me this is a news post. If yes, I'm going to go and basically send for approval. If not, I'm going to basically reject that approval and send the email that you just saw what I received in my inbox. Um, so that's how you can easily now differentiate between a news post and a page. And now imagine all of these conditions going into one flow. Having this in this, in this flow makes it really simple and actually very much targeted and, and clear in what you're doing. Now let's look at um, auto approvals, right? 
So I'm here. I'm going to create a new post. And I'm going to put this new post demo. Um, you know, I am a, I'm a manager here. Um, so I expect uh, this, this thing um, just gets published. I don't want to be uh, going through a approval process because I'm a manager. You know, I have some powers in the, in the organization. So let's go do submit news for approval. I'm a manager. I'm going to submit this. And I'm going to hope this is really auto approved. So I'm going to go to sort of like any um, approvals and, and basically go through that step. So let's see uh, what happens in a minute. I should get uh, an email. Um, there you go. I got an email. And the email says, your page was auto approved and published. Great. So now as a manager, I don't have to go through this, uh, you know, approval thing. But if I go as a normal user and say news post and say, this is user news post and then do the same thing, submit news for approval. Now this should take me through the approval process. Within a few seconds, I should receive an email here um, saying that that user submitted, Karam actually submitted this page for approval. Um, hopefully it's quicker there. This, so this um, use, use, you know, this post uh, requires approval for publishing. So this is how I can easily now differentiate, right? And I can put those conditions. Every organization has different uh, processes and different guidance on, you know, how auto approval should work. But here is how my auto approval works. So I use the um, get direct reports action uh, available in flow uh, under the somebody is trying to connect. Interesting. Anyway, uh, looks like my home is ready for frame hacking. Um, but anyway, so get direct reports um, for the user email. So this user email, if you look at in the dynamic content, it says that the address of the user who triggered the flow, right? So if it's me, then it's me. If it's Karam, it's Karam. And then I check if this manager um, has direct reports, right? So the length, um, I'm just doing length of the um, value, right? So the value will give me all of the direct reports. If that is greater than zero, if the array is greater than zero, then yes, this person is a manager, so auto approve the page. If not, I go through the normal approval process and, and complete the uh, approve or reject um, based on whatever I review the page. So it's really simple, right? So that's the kind of what we have seen. We saw the associating multiple approval workflows. We saw how we can handle news posts. We also saw a scenario where I can identify someone as a manager and you know auto approve pages for the manager. Let's look at some complex scenario uh, parallel approvals. Um, so if, what if you want to track the approval at every stage um, and and also have a way uh, where you can log certain things, you can audit certain things, and you get the flexibility of how each approval phase, um, you know, goes through. So, for example, if it's trucks, the approval might be different. If it's Karam, the approval might be different. So you might want to handle those things. So at, at those instances, uh, parallel approvals help to manage those kind of customizations in our flow. So let's um, basically look at the example, uh, how this works. So let me go create a new page. Parallel approval demo. And I'm going to submit the page for approval, right? So I'm going to select this uh, flow right now, submit page for approval. Flow. I'm going to submit. So this one, um, the approval goes to two people. It comes to me, uh, the user that I'm currently using, and then it goes to another user um, over here as well. So you should um, see emails coming through um, very soon uh, on this approval. There you go. I got my approval, right? 
So I can uh, do everything from here, or I can also basically go to the page, review approvals. I'm going to see the approval over here. You know what? I'm going to approve this page. This is great timing. Approved and awesome. Let's say I'm really happy about this page. I'm going to confirm this page, right? Um, so that's my job is done here. But there is still one approval pending, which is, um, you know, Karam needs to approve this. But now I'm going to be like, look at the title and say, um, this is too early to push this post. Please work with your PMM. And I'm going to reject this, right? So imagine the scenario right now. Somebody approved it, but still the should didn't be approved because the other person in the parallel workflow actually is now going to reject it. So what's going to happen now, the ideal scenario should be that my approval page should be rejected. There you go. It immediately refreshed. So I should get an email now saying what happened. So it will say the page was not approved by Karam. It was sent back to draft. And here's the comment that uh, Karam actually uh, put in forth. And now both, uh, if both uh, users, um, you know, reject the page, you'll see the page was not approved by Karam and Chats, right? So, and, and then you'll have both the comments here. So how do we do this thing? Um, so let's go back to the, the other flow, submit page for approval. So this one has gone through several uh, modifications. Um, and, and, the, and, the, and the key modification here is using a parallel branch, right? So as soon as you, you, you create a scope, a scope needs an action to start parallel branch. And the action that you can use is the one that you said come to pending. And from there, you start two approvals. If you have five approvals, you can have five parallel branches, right? And the scope allows you to um, basically come down to a single point of execution after that branch or after all of those parallel branches get executed. So here in start and approval, um, nothing really fancy going on. It's the same approval. Um, in the conditions, however, what I'm going to do is I'm incrementing the approved count. So I'm tracking how many people are approving this uh, particular request. Um, this whole request, right? This is the page. And then I'm also um, uh, basically uh, getting hold of the comments that this user um, would put in his approval rejection um, area, right? So here, this is for the approver comments. Similarly, for approvers rejected, uh, because I don't know who could reject this, I'm going to track, uh, if at all this person rejected, I'm going to put that person's name into an array. Uh, array variable. And similarly, the rejected comments as well. So now I get a uh, bucket of, hey, what happened in approved and what happened in rejected, right? So similarly, the same uh, goes for the other person as well. And I, I do the same. And by this time, if both approve, the approved will be uh, two. Uh, and by the time both approved, we'll have their comments in here. If somebody rejected, right, the approved will be just one because uh, only one approved it and one rejected it. And if both rejected, this basically won't move at all, will be in zero. And same thing for rejected uh, comments as well. And finally, uh, what now makes me um, check for if the request has been approved or not is checking the variable, right? The variable that I uh, incremented every time somebody approved. Um, if that is equal to two, then both approved it. So that is the condition where everyone must approve. And if they approved it, then I check the, I set the content approval to approved and then email notification sent that, hey, everything is good. If not, I reject the page and I send the email notification. So one of the cool tricks you can do here, since you're all using array variables, so I'm using all of the uh, collections here as an, um, for the approvers rejected and, and even the, um, I don't use the rejected string now, but, but you can see I'm using array for like, uh, who are the approvers that rejected them? What are the comments for approved and rejected? So that, now you can use the join um, expression um, for when you do the rejected. Sorry, I'm going for an order. So approval is easy. You know that both approved, so you can get the names of the approval. You can get the names of comments. The rejection is pretty complex, right? Because you have to know who rejected it, either of one rejected, and what are the comments uh, either of one gave. So for that, you can simply use a really cool expression um, called join, 
Um, and then if you see my join, all I do is uh, join variables approvers rejected. So that's the array um, where it holds who are the approvers rejected. And if there is more than one, it will concatenate that with uh, the ambassador, right? Really, really simple. There's no, this, this, is like, this is like straightforward. Um, I have an array, I combine them with uh, Amberson. If you get two, you get Amberson included in the middle. If not, you just get one. Similarly, um, you do for join, right? Um, and I already have the rejected comments in the uh, array variable. I use that, and now I use a dash dash instead of Amberson um, just to indicate that, hey, there are two comments here, and, and here are the comments. Now, you can take this further complex and say that, this person did this comment, this person did that comment, if you basically do a multi-dimension array and stuff like that. So, but this is a really simple way to kind of like bring an array and, and, and make them a string um, in flow. So this is how this uh, flow works, and it has parallel approvals, and actually it makes total sense if you want to track this. Now you can audit everything along the way to understand what happens. You can even put it back into the SharePoint list and, and add a column in your pages library that references that to show all of the comments. So this is, you have endless possibilities now that you can go start doing these things. So um, so that was my demos uh, that I wanted to share today with you all. Um, so I, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, Vesa, back to you. Thank you, Chucks. Uh, really awesome stuff. Uh, really great to see these things uh, and how it, how, what's possible with the with the flow and, and SharePoint integration. Um, there was one question which I wanted to just double check, Chucks. Uh, we don't have to actually yeah. uh, explicitly. Well, anyway, so there's uh, external users for Power Apps. Uh, is there a, any any information from your side related on supporting? Power Apps for the external users in SharePoint Online. I think it was, I can't remember who asked the question, but it's it's understandable request. So external user support for uh, Power Apps. Flow, uh, Power for Apps. Power Apps custom, custom forms is, is yeah. coming. Yeah. Um, we are working on that. Um, I don't know the plans of how external users um, in standalone Power Apps, that's something um, I think we should, um, understand how Power Apps team is going to uh, work on that. But they're working on that as well, because yep. both are kind of like tied together. Um, but yeah, it's coming very soon. So external users, when they go to a list and see uh, open a form that is a custom form, they will be able to use it. Yep. Excellent. Now, uh, Chris, I just uploaded, uh, provided, uh, sorry, I'll credit you as a presenter. I think you're next on the queue. So thank you, Chucks, for this one. Um, you had some family errands to run as well, so hopefully this yep. isn't too late. So we'll catch later, and thank you for the demo.